attitude addict i do not know about this channel uh su57 finally gets it gets it that is a tongue twister su57 finally gets its fifth generation al51 f1 engine oh, okay the Russian fifth-generation fighter Su-57 is often criticized for its fourth-generation engine. Yeah. Now, it is all about to change. Mm -hmm. A trailer for the film Masters of the Sky, which is dedicated to the 85th anniversary of the Sukhoi Design Bureau, has Ooh. been released by Channel One in Russia. Masters of the Sky, huh? I need to go check out this trailer next. The fifth-generation Su-57 fighter, which is equipped with the second-stage engine, known as Product 30, or AL fifty one F one will be featured in the film, which is Ooh, well, this is not a clip featuring the engine exactly. This is more featuring the two dimensional thrust vector control exhaust system that they're testing on the uh, plane. Uh, I think they just I, this could be part of the trailer he's mentioning, but um, yeah, the plane has been long overdue for this engine. Is scheduled to air on December fifteenth. This engine is equipped with a flat nozzle that is capable of thrust vectoring. The trailer includes footage of the experimental T-52 aircraft with the much-anticipated power plant interesting. and the Su-57M mm fitted with... It's very interesting how even though it's like a two-dimensional thrust vector control, it's put at like... <coughs> Sorry, yeah. It's put at almost a, like a... No, I wouldn't call it... F is it 45 degrees? Feels slightly less than 45 degrees. But it's almost like at a 30 to 40 degree angle. Very, very interesting. And then the diagram earlier with the arrows to the left and the right and top and bottom seemed like it's it still has the capacity to do more than just up and down. With two AL-51 F1 engines, this power plant is the final component that ensures the Su-57 is entirely compliant with the standards of Russia's fifth generation fighter aircraft. These standards include multifunctionality, stealth, super maneuverability, advanced intelligence, all aspect situational awareness for the pilot, a high combat payload with long range precision missiles, and supersonic cruising in non afterburner mode. I will say though, like with one engine of the old exhaust mechanism with the 3D thrust vectoring, but no thermal isolation or ablation, I guess. And then this new one, the old one looks kind of, as of now. For now, I feel like visually speaking, the old one looks nicer. The new one is definitely better. Like, just period, the new one is better. The old one just, uh, I don't know, man. Maybe we gotta wait for both the engine exhaust to be changed to the new one, and then they can fly one around and show us. But yeah, for now, visually it doesn't look so cool. Application wise, yeah, definitely that helps a lot. The public presentation of the Su-57 with AL-51 F1 engines on Channel 1 is a significant milestone as it signals the engine's readiness for production and deployment. As the second stage engine satisfies the final criterion, this power plant is equipped with a thrust vector control system and a flat nozzle that is oriented at an angle of approximately 45 degrees. It improves the aircraft's flight performance by increasing the afterburner thrust to 18,000 kilogram force and the thrust okay. in emergency mode to 19 to 19.5 tons. In afterburner mode, if that is one engine, that is some crazy thrust. If the thrust for like 18,000 kilogram force, that's 80 tons, 18, sorry, not 80, 18 tons of force for one engine, that's a lot of thrust. This engine achieves an extraordinary thrust to dry weight ratio of 0 0.078. This nozzle configuration... Wait... 0 0.07 shouldn't it be above one like it should be way above one how heavy is this plane 18 18 like how much is it 36 this plane is heavier than 36 tons no way 
I guess 18 kilogram force was like both the engines combined then. Hmm. Well, I guess we have to look into that separately. Not only substantially reduces the aircraft's radar cross section, but also reduces the fighter's infrared signature in the rear hemisphere. The AL-51F1 engines of the Su-57M are capable of achieving a supersonic sustained speed of 1.95 to 2.1 Mach. The AL-51F1 okay, is good. a fifth-generation turbofan engine with a twin-shaft design. Oh, I like the exhaust on this one. Even though this isn't the 2D thrust vectoring, this is a 3D thrust vectoring, you can still see they have like serrated edges on it. So... It's more like the F-35's exhaust. It's still kind of stealth. Not exactly, but interesting. I guess they just decided to go all in for the infrared and thermal insulation. And afterburning capability, as indicated by open sources. It is equipped with a three-stage fan and a five-stage high-pressure compressor which are powered by a single-stage low-pressure turbine and a single-stage high-pressure turbine. The new engine improves the fuel efficiency and thrust of the aircraft by using an automatic control system that calibrates fuel delivery in accordance with atmospheric pressure, altitude, and humidity. In December 2023, high-ranking sources close to the Russian Aerospace Forces told TASS about plans to equip all Su-57 fighters produced by the komsomolsk Amur aircraft plant starting in 2024 with AL-51 F1 engines. However, the fighters delivered to the military in 2023 were equipped with the first stage AL-41 F1 or Product 117 engines. Mm. The Arkip Lyulka Design Bureau has been executing ongoing development of the second stage engine for the Su-57. The initial bench test was conducted on November 11, 2016, and flight tests commenced in December 2017 on an experimental T-52 aircraft. I need to check that. I'm not sure. Maybe it started in 2017. But the prototype of the plane has been flying from 2010. And today it's 2024. And it's still not the production variants of this plane, which I think there's like a total of 20, are still nowhere near flying like the date where they can fly with the proper engine they were supposed to fly with from the start. Very similar issues to the F-35 program, where they are taking like 10, like 5 to 10 years into the service, like since these planes have been inducted in service, to get the engine and to get like other sensors in. That's 5 to 10 years is more for the F-35. I suppose relatively, uh, if you say from the date where the plane went into service, it's faster for the Sukhoi 57. But yeah, the engine has been long overdue. At first, the engine was equipped with a circular nozzle. A scientific and technical conference on engine development prospects was convened at Samara Technical University in July 2023 during which the new engine was officially designated AL-51F1. The AL-51F1 was designated as the second stage engine for the Su-57 in a presentation by UEC Kuznetsov. The first hmm. stage AL-41F1 engine has a nominal thrust of 8,800 kilogram force, 14,500 kilogram okay. thrust on afterburner, and 15,000 kilogram force in emergency mode. The oh, AL-51 okay. F1 engine is expected to generate a nominal thrust of at least 11,000 kilogram force and 17,000 kilogram force. With the oh, that is a lot. Like without afterburner, 11,000 is a lot. Comparatively, with afterburner, it's not increasing that much, huh? That's interesting. Like your afterburner thrust is actually relatively going down, it feels like. afterburner, according to aviation experts. The thrust-to-weight ratio of the Su-57 will exceed 1, with a normal takeoff weight ranging from 1.15 to 1.2, compared to the current ratio of 1.09 with a normal takeoff weight and 0.97 with a full load, due to its takeoff weight of over 35 tons. Oh my goodness, the plane is actually above the... 
That's heavy. I guess, well, it does classify in like those big heavy fighter categories. So I did not know it was that heavy. Interesting. A ratio greater than one indicates that the aircraft is capable of producing more power than its own weight, which suggests that it has exceptional maneuverability and performance. Now, do you think the Su-57 is a true... It does look really pretty. ...true fifth-generation fighter by the Western standards? Well, by Western standards, definitely not a fifth-generation fighter. Uh, or like a true fifth-generation fighter. But uh, I would say it's way high up there compared to like standard fourth generation fighters. It is slightly better than fourth generation fighters. I would put it at that. There's a few very like basic things which give away the stealth, like this IRST over here, and then uh, the engine intakes as well. But otherwise, yeah, pretty plain, long overdue for the engine. Hopefully we get to see it with the fancy new engines on it. Decent video from Attitude Addicts.